Well hello and welcome to this video and as I said in the layout tour I did say I was going to be starting some episodes which show you the progress on the layout. So this is going to be the layout update and as you can see quite a considerable amount of change since the last layout update which was the layout tour. So to start it off I'm going to go for a little bit of a stock update and to start off we've got this now this is a box as you can tell it's definitely a class 60 there's the box for it there and the camera won't focus because the focus on this is absolutely horrible but it is actually 60059 and she was bought as a birthday present but she hasn't been wrapped up yet so she's just been tested and she's working absolutely fine. The wheels do need cleaning because um, it's a little bit jerky but other than that absolutely fine and then we've also got this mainline model which is of the Great Western Conflat. Now if we just do a little comparison this is the Hornby version of the Conflat, and they are exactly the same only the mainline one has a little black piece on me and the Hornby one doesn't. So that is the only difference apart from the livery. The mainline one cost me five pounds. The Hornby one is now going twelve pounds each. And that for me is just ugh, a bit too much. But if you're looking for a decent enough wagon, these here, which are the Backman boiler carriers. Now this retails at exactly the same price as the new updated or non-updated Hornbycon flat but Hattons have got these on sale for £7 each. That is just brilliant. For £7 each and for it to be Backman with slimline NEM couplings is just absolutely brilliant. So that's enough of the stock. Let's get on to what happened on layout. Now we finally got a new board. So the new board arrived quite a while ago and I've been doing some considerable changes to it and one thing that we had to get was underlay for the track which is this stuff. So we bought an absolute ton of it from Patterns. This is stuff for the straights, and if we just pan around, this stuff here is used for the curves, so you can actually get a piece of track, put it on there, and then use a craft knife, like this one here, cut round it and everything. So that's what we've been doing, and track pins are becoming a problem, because if you don't get the right length of track pin, the pin will just sink right through the sleeper then the sleeper will bend the track lifts up, the actual rails will come up and it just damages all the rails and so we had to get really really quite long nails I mean that is the standard size of one there but we had to get slightly longer than that so I've been rooting around in that pile trying to find them individually and um, this is a little more couple of wagons that I've got which are just on the layout and I'm kind of in the middle of working out where things are going to go. I am going to have a signal gantry just about here and the signal box and over there in that corner there is going to be a graveyard and a church and um, this level crossing here I bought at a car boot sale and it looked perfectly fine except the rails um, weren't exactly the same colour but that wasn't a problem but whenever I tried to run a train over that it would not go over that so I'm just thinking that it needs a good clean but I haven't actually gotten around to it yet so if you've seen the last video of the layout then you'd notice that it's similar principle it's got the two main lines which run round and then a couple of sidings branching off now from about there there'd be a siding running right the way along there and going on to a short 
turn and running to about where them pieces of cardboard is over there. Then about there it would have a set of points and another set of points and then it would split in two. So it was the very original Pico design. But what we're going for now, we've got quite a lot of buildings. That is not all of them, so we're going to focus more on a town scene. And along here we're going to have a short curve and then two lines here where we either have a loading bay or a diesel depot for maintenance, as I've written on where the underlay is going to go. The track, I actually found out, so I said in my last video that it was third and second radius, but when I came to lift it all up, I found my new train set, which is the London 2012 train set, which is down there in the box came with third radius curve. So when I tried to join them together, they looked really small, and I found out that the inner track was first radius curves, and I was absolutely horrified at first radius curves, because I'd been running stuff like Hornby HSTs around that, the £150 premium model, and I thought, well, I'm definitely not going to do that. So I bought, well, actually, I didn't buy, I got them with the 2012 train set, I used the curve from this and the existing second radius. So I've now got much better curves on the sides of the layout. And moving away from the standard principle of having a platform here and a platform there, I've decided to go because now that it was second and third instead of first and second, it's obviously going to be closer to the board. And I wasn't able to fit. A platform here. So what I decided to do was just put a little siding there and some other little details and have a main island platform between the two. And I have to say it does actually look quite nice because I don't have to really double up on things which also saves figures and the cost of these platforms. But I have got another platform there. So basic idea is you drive up and this is where all the car park scene is going to go. And you walk along here, come through the station building, buy your ticket, and then come over a Hornby walkway bridge to the main platform, which shares both lines. Now, you'll notice that the second radius line has a kind of a odd curve there. And I couldn't do the same on the opposite side. So, this piece here had to be done with a first radius curve. I have got a ton of buildings, most of them are in that there, if the light will focus, don't think it will, but I've been placing a couple around, just seeing what the general idea of things is going to look, there is going to be a tunnel scene over there, and there's going to be a walkway right the way along here, and this area here, there is going to be a farm or somewhere, there's then going to be a thatched cottage here, and as I said over there, there's going to be the church, etc. Now where all this massive array and piles of models are, there's going to be a new Batman bus depot. And I was originally thinking have a tram line so that I can buy them new Birkenhead trams um, or Batman brought out. Because I go there quite often and I filmed the entire ride. That will be up um, in quite a while yet. I've got quite much, too many uploads to do before I reach those. To have the tram line going straight the way down the layout, and then it splits into a couple of sections so that I can have trams in some sidings. But then I thought, well, it wouldn't really be very convenient because you've got the railway right next to it, and it's just miles more easier for you to use the railway. So it wouldn't be very convenient having a tram line. So the idea was scrapped, but hopefully I will be getting the trams so I can just run them on the main line on either set of rails. There are little things like this. I've just been placing things around and just seeing how things look. So if you have any ideas for the layout and what I should put on here with the space that I have, nothing too big, but something on relatively good scale what I could do to fit in with the town scene 
very much appreciated. So I hope you've enjoyed the updates, and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye for now.